Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 12th chapter, and I invite you to follow along. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three, and they will be divided. Father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be a scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. Why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Lately, we have been experiencing those hot summer days. And in other parts of the country, those hot summer days mean one thing. Forest fires. We have heard stories about forest fires in our nation, in our world. And we've heard about how after the fire... The land is left charred and burnt. We have seen images of blackened trees and grounds after the fire has blazed a path across the forest. And these images, even after the fire is put out, it really does appear if those areas will never recover from the damage done to those fires. The images of the blackened trees, the images of the destruction, the images of the decimation gives the impression that these images, these very lands that once teemed with life are dead and will no longer support life forevermore. These images of destruction, these images of blackened trees, these images of charred land, this is what came to mind when I came across an article about forest fires. Ironically, the article was entitled, Life After the Fire. The author was sharing that there is good things that come after the fire. That the heat and the fire helps those cone-bearing trees burst open. And the seeds come out. And after a month or so, new life begins to come forth. I thought this was extremely fascinating, especially after I read this next line, this reframing of destruction and dissemination, this opportunity for new growth. After I read this line, it said, forests need to be exposed to fire every 50 to 100 years to invigorate new growth that suppressing the fire would actually be detrimental to the forest because the dead trees and other items would create a tinderbox and destroy the new life, the new growth that is trying to live in the forest. This reframing of the narrative of destruction and dissemination, dissem, de, destruction is an opportunity for new growth. Reframing this narrative as an opportunity for new life sounds a lot like resurrection, doesn't it? This reframing of the narrative of new life and new growth out of destruction sounds a lot like we are going through as the wider church. Sounds a lot like what we are going through as an individual community of faith. On more than one occasion, I have said, you know, pre-COVID, we were doing okay. We felt good. We had our programs. It felt like we were on track and we were doing things. And then the pandemic hit and wiped out everything. It wiped out our progress. It wiped out all that we have built. And we are standing in this place of not knowing what is next. We're not knowing where to go. 
Immediately after I read this line about the forest needing to be experiencing that fire every 50 to 100 years, I thought of us as Midway Christian Church. It really does seem like we are experiencing life after the fire. It's hard to see the empty pews that were once full. It's hard to know that what we did just a few years ago, a few months ago, is no longer connecting to the community which surrounds us. It's hard to know what to do next, to where to start. Yet, what if, like this article, we reframe the narrative? We reframe the narrative, and what we see as destruction and death, the Spirit is using for new life and new growth, making a way for something new to come forward. Or let me say it this way. What if in this new reality, this post-COVID, whatever that means, what if in this new reality, if we are coming to terms that what we did even six months ago, what we did just a few weeks ago is no longer in working, what if in this new reality, as Jesus' disciples, we are once again being confronted with what it means for us to pray, to hope, to work for the coming of God's kingdom here on earth, just as it is in heaven? You see, as people of faith, we tend to forget that part of the gospel message. We are okay with that whole love and grace and lovey-dovey feel-good stuff. But we ignore that the gospel message calls for an upending of the status quo. We like to make the gospel message an either or thing, but it's a both and. It is love and grace and an upending of the status quo. Luke reminds us that Jesus isn't this blonde-haired, blue-eyed guy that we can love and adore from afar. He's not one who's going to play by our rules. The kingdom of God does not play by our regulations. It does not ask our permission before it brings transformation, before it brings healing and wholeness. Luke reminds us that we have idolized and idealized this image of Jesus, that we like him all rosy as he's hugging children and breaking bread with the sinners, forgetting that he broke all the rules and the status quo by these very acts. Luke reminds his readers, Luke reminds us that as Jesus' disciples, we cannot talk about, we cannot pray for, we cannot hope for the coming of God's kingdom here on earth without realizing that when it comes to fruition, that when it is in our midst, it's going to cause conflict. It is going to make the powers that be angry. It is going to make people, and yes, I'm including all of us sitting in the pews, myself included, standing behind this pulpit. When the kingdom of God is in our midst, it makes us uncomfortable. From the very, very beginning of his gospel, Luke told us that God never promised us a peace which is safe. God never promised us a peace that would fit into our own terms. God never promised us a peace that would only benefit a select few. From the very beginning, even before Jesus was born, God told us that the peace that Jesus brings, the peace that Jesus proclaims, will level the playing field. It will bring the rich down and lift the poor up. The proud will be scattered and those who are meek will be given places of honor. Our whole faith story tells us that Jesus came with a purpose, that, came, that Jesus came to bring transformation, that Jesus came to bring healing and wholeness, that Jesus came to teach us to be different, a different way of being in relationship, of being in community, that in the Holy Spirit will come like fire. Think Pentecost. Think Pentecost. The Holy Spirit coming like fire fire and igniting our hearts, igniting our minds to the fire of the spirit that is sweeping our land 
purifying our hearts and minds, purifying us as communities of faith so that we can become the people that God created and called us to be. And once this fire burns across the earth, once it burns away the death, once it burns away all that stuff that is preventing us from being the community God calls us to be, yes, it may look different. It may look charred, it may have empty pews, it may look different, but that is where we meet the kingdom of God. That is where the new life comes in. That's where the seeds of hope and justice are released. That is where we see new growth and we will see new life coming forth. What Jesus is telling his disciples, what Jesus is telling us is that there is a cost to discipleship. There's a purpose to discipleship. He's trying to get his disciples to look at the bigger picture of ministry. He's calling all of his disciples to a radical transformation. He's calling us to be engaged in the world, to see the world, not just what we want to see and hear and create in our own image. Jesus wants us to understand that discipleship, being true to the gospel message, is going to bring conflict in our lives. After all, look at what the powers that be did to him when he proclaimed a peaceable kingdom. The gospel message is both and, love and grace and upending the status quo. Yet when we look at this world through God's perspective, Look at it through God's justice and commitment to shalom, a pledge to love one another as God's love us. That is where new growth happens. That is where new life happens. That is where the kingdom of God greets us and meets us and reminds us that we have work to do. As people of faith, these empty pews, these reminders that we know what, what we did no longer works anymore. All of these signs which we take as signs of death and destruction, they are signs of new life. They are signs of hope. They are signs of new growth. The message has stayed the same for some 2,000 years. We have work to do, yes. But seeds of new life are growing and percolating. Seeds of justice and hope are taking forth and taking root. As people of faith, as Midway Christian Church, the fires have burned away all those things that are preventing us from being the people that God has called us to be. As Midway Christian Church, we are experiencing life after the fire. We have an opportunity to, for new growth to rise from the ruins if we have the courage, if we have the strength, and hopefully have the wisdom to listen for God's word and will for us and embrace what God is doing in our midst. May it be so. Amen.